First of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I recognize the spectacular stakes of this moment, and I'm so grateful for the privilege that is being your senior class speaker. It is a real honor and also very scary. There are a lot of people here. <laughs> kind of makes me wish I had taken that public speaking jam plan. Oh well, maybe next year. <laughs> We're all here today because of the people who have carried us, so I will begin with a few notes of gratitude for the people who have carried me. First, my family. Dad, hi. Thanks for always loving me unconditionally and for flying halfway around the world to see me walk across this stage. I'm really glad you made it. Please don't do anything embarrassing in front of my friends. <laughs> Mom, thanks for being my rock, for being one of my biggest role models, and for helping me file my taxes. I wish you could be here. To my sister, Lauren, thank you for always picking up my FaceTime calls and for challenging me in ways that a younger sibling should never have the audacity to. You are the person that matters most to me in this world. I love you so much. To just a few of the special adults Colby has given me. Dan Klein, thank you for pouring your heart into your job and for helping me process through the challenging moments in life. Sarah Workman, thank you for being my mom away from home. I'm so honored to have you as one of my guests today. Lisa Noble, thanks for getting me a job. <laughs> Taria Rog, thank you for making me feel like more of a grown-up than I actually am and for offering me grace when I've needed it. Professor Burke, thank you for giving me the gift of creative writing. It is something that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. Megan Marsh, in our last conversation, you told me it was your job to love me with specificity. You have done that and so much more. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lastly, a thank you to the admissions team at Colby College for putting together such a stellar class of 2021. You all are some of the most insightful, resilient, hardworking individuals I have ever met. I've learned so much growing up alongside you, and I'm so proud of the human beings we've become. I've been struck recently by the power of shared experience. Although I've often made fun of those silly One Colby banners, there is some truth to their message. We really have been through a lot together. Over the past nine months, we've left a profound legacy at this school. As the cohort who led the charge through a vast sea of unknowns brought on by a global pandemic, emerging on the other side more resilient than ever. And that is certainly worth celebrating. Of course, there are so many more unique experiences that have united us over the past four years. Little moments. I'm talking about gathering with friends on Miller Lawn on the first 40 degree day in March and celebrating the end of winter together. I'm talking about the rush we all felt on the first day of senior year when our Colby cards finally unlocked the doors of the apartments. I'm talking about ordering Domino's garlic knots with friends at 2 a.m. and then immediately regretting it the morning after. Posting on Colby misconnections about a lost earring and then having your faith in humanity restored when someone actually returns it to you. Matching with another Colby person on Tinder, never exchanging a word and then making awkward eye contact from across Dana. <laughs> Panicking at 3.55 when you realize it's your testing day and you only have five minutes to run across campus to get tested or going to use the spa printer right before class only to see that it's out of toner again. <laughs> Little moments that at the time felt unspectacular, but in hindsight will be the things about Colby that we'll miss the most. Above all else though, there is one experience that I think has united us more than any other. I'm talking about loneliness. There are many different kinds of loneliness. There's the loneliness of sitting in your room by yourself on a Saturday night and wondering why everyone else seems to have a party to go to. There's the loneliness of doing poorly on an exam and being filled with a sense of inadequacy, like the people around you are smarter or more deserving of opportunity than you are. There's the loneliness of being in a crowd full of strangers, but everyone looks different than you or thinks different than you or comes from a different world than you do. And perhaps most profoundly of all, being in a room full of people who love each other and feeling like you could disappear and life would go on just the same. Life in a pandemic, life in a world of social isolation, life in a country divided by politics and racism and sexism and classism have all been stark reminders of how deeply loneliness can hit. 
All of us have lived through these moments of being alone, and my guess is that these feelings don't go away after college. In fact, as we scatter out into the world, I'm confident that loneliness will characterize our first years of post-grad life in more ways than we are ready to fathom. But I don't think that needs to be a bad thing. You see, at the end of the day, I'm grateful for our communal loneliness. I take solace in the fact that, in spite of being alone, we're alone together. This pandemic, in spite of all the pain and loss that it has brought, has come with so many opportunities for joy, reminders of all the things we so often take for granted. It has brought me to profound moments of gratitude, of getting to live and breathe more fully all the things that once seemed so banal, things like smiles and hugs. During my time at Colby, I was introduced to the concept of joy. It was here that I learned about a kind of joy that transcends beyond a state of perpetual happiness. Rather, joy is a wide-reaching sensation that entails the human capacity to feel so profoundly an infinite spectrum of emotion. I'm talking about happiness, of course, but I'm also talking about sadness and about anger. I'm talking about confusion and jealousy and excitement, about love and heartbreak and discomfort and surprise and longing and loneliness and every emotion in between. Each of these emotions represents moments of feeling something worth feeling, moments we're not meant to brush past, but rather dive into. In the infinite words of Glennon Doyle, I'm not a mess, but a deeply feeling person in a messy world. And it is indeed a messy world we live in. As you all know, getting sent home last March was devastating. For those of us on campus, we lost the last two months of our junior year and any chance for closure with the graduating class of 2020. We lost sports seasons, thesis preparation meetings, and the engagement of in-person learning. Those of us who were abroad were ripped out of places that were just starting to feel familiar and away from acquaintances who were just starting to feel like friends. But I know, amidst all the losses, we found joy. We found joy in getting to spend more time with family. We found joy in days suddenly free of all commitments, of baking and crocheting and sleeping in and learning to knit and making sourdough and reconnecting with old friends over FaceTime. And I would be remiss not to acknowledge how more special today is because of all we've been through in the last 14 months. How we are so blessed and privileged to be here today, surrounded by community. After a year characterized by such immense isolation, I hope you all feel as lucky as I do that we get to celebrate in the joys of togetherness right now with each other. I will leave you with this. Live each day fully and know that none of them will be perfect. Savor the little moments for all they have to offer you, the catharsis of sadness, the wonder of surprise, even the hollow of loneliness. Be grateful for all the memories you've curated over the past four years and savor them for what they are, not what they should have been. Because at their core, if you let them, every moment in life is a moment for joy. So when life throws you curveballs, watch them, read them, and swing for the fences. One of the hardest parts about speech writing is finding a satisfying way to end. Indeed, closure has never been my forte. In middle school, at the end of the school year, when all the other kids were hanging out in the gym, saying goodbye and signing hashtag hags in each other's yearbooks, I sat on the school bus because I was afraid of endings. So in the spirit of joy, of reclaiming this nostalgic, bittersweet moment, I'd like to invite my best friend, Scott Jackson, to join me on stage in singing a song about endings. Thanks for laughing at the funny parts. <laughs> this is a song called At the End of It All. Uh, the lyrics are pretty simple. Feel free to sing along.
up right, you don't fight, stay close and you just might, get alone, find yourself a home, you won't ever be alone. We're at the end of it all, and even still we stand tall, we may be young, but we're not done, we're at the end of it all. the beach, grow up in trees, and find yourself a friend. Don't grow old, you'll just turn out cold. Do exactly as you're told. So grow up right, and don't you fight. If you spread your wings, you just might fly to a place where life's not a race. Don't get caught at your orderly pace. End of it all, and even still we stand tall. We may be young, but we're not done. No, oh, no, we're at the end of it all. and tall. We may be young, but we're not done. No, oh, no, we're at the end of it all. Sing along with me, please. We're at the end of it all. And even still we stand tall. We may be young, but we're not done. No, oh, no, we're at the end of it all. One more time, one more time. We're at the end of it all. Even still we stand tall We may be young, but we're not done We're at the end of it all